Year to date, PayPal stock is down over 57%. Are we finally safe and able to buy the dip on PayPal stock? We'll talk about that and more on today's show. What is going on, investors? Hopefully, guys are doing well out there. Time to talk about PayPal stock, which we talked about has just created a gigantic ski slope of a stock chart as this one has been in sharp decline perpetually since August of last year. The stock is now trading down here at about $86 per share. Before announcing earnings after the bell, stock was closer to about $82 per share. We see a small bounce. Talk about this from a technical perspective here in a moment, but I want to get to these earnings and we'll jump into some valuation metrics as well. Some earnings estimates, see where Wall Street has PayPal's business because obviously it's fallen off a cliff, okay? From a stock perspective, Perspective, but also from a revenue growth and a profit perspective, uh, numbers started to get a little ugly over at PayPal. We'll talk about the kind of the forward guidance and if we think PayPal is going to be able to meet that guidance based on kind of the, uh, the financial and economic condition that we find ourselves in here in the United States and around the world. And then finally, we'll jump over to the numbers as well. They came in at $6.5 billion. That was on the revenue side. That was good for 7.8% year over year growth. That beat expectations by about 9 Ninety million dollars. I'll let you decide if a company doing roughly seven billion dollars worth of revenue on a quarterly basis, growing below ten percent, deserves an eighteen times forward multiple on their earnings or a $99 billion valuation. It certainly makes a lot more sense than it did a few months ago when PayPal stock was a lot higher. Now, speaking of those earnings, the Wall Street was expecting that 6.4. We came in at 6.5. Earnings essentially came in line, and we talked about how that was roughly 7% growth. We're expecting for the upcoming quarter about $7 billion worth of revenue, which would be 13.5% growth. For the upcoming quarters, I see all the way out into Q4, Wall Street's actually projecting 20% year over year growth on PayPal. So I think there's some opportunity with PayPal if they were going to be able to reaccelerate their revenue. And look, Wall Street analysts, at least the consensus among them, are actually predicting that PayPal gets back to 20% year over year revenue growth. Now, I doubt that factors in maybe the potential for some kind of recession, not only here in the United States, but maybe across the world. Certainly something like that could put a threat on those revenue or gross over at PayPal. But one thing is for sure, the multiple on PayPal, we could split hairs. We could talk about guidance. We could talk about revenue. We could talk about sales. We could talk about a lot of things with PayPal. But the bottom line is the multiple has compressed quite a bit. When you look at their price to earnings trading, at least according to this at 23 times, it's probably a little bit more adjusted. Once we factor in that earnings came in in the most recent quarter, they updated some guidance. We'll likely see those estimates revised a little bit in the coming days ahead, but you're kind of in that mid 20s PE on PayPal. That's certainly a five year low. This is a five year chart of price to earnings over at PayPal. You're at a five year low. In fact, this one hasn't been south of $50 or 50 times earnings, excuse me, for many, basically the entire history of the company over the last five years. Now, from a price to sales perspective, also hitting a five year low down south of, uh, we'll call it about 3.8 times sales on that one from a traditional valuation metric. If you just rely on these and look, there's people that simply just rely on technical patterns. There's some people that just simply rely on the financial. Certainly I lean more into these financials. There's a lot of people that look at forward estimates as well. And there's traditional valuation metrics. The bottom line is I guarantee you there's nobody here on YouTube showing you forward guidance, showing you traditional valuation metrics, and then we'll run through these financials like a CPA and then look at the tech Nicole's, that's the reason why you're tuning in to the investor channel. We're over 100,000 subscribers strong, and I appreciate any of you that has chosen to subscribe to the channel over the last few years. Now, kicking off those net revenues over at PayPal, those came in at $6.48 billion. That was up about $450 million from the previous period on a year over year basis. The reason why I stipulate 480 million is when I come to transaction expenses and my math isn't always that great, but we grew from 2.275 up to 2.8 million on those expense side. And again, this is just the transaction expenses. Though this actually grew by over $540 million. So yes, we added some revenue in the most recent quarter, but it was incredibly low margin revenue for some reason or another. And maybe that will reverse in subsequent quarter. Maybe there was reasons for that, but I just noticed right off the top that yes, we grew our net revenues, but our transaction expenses grew as well. 
well. And then obviously a lot of our other expenses are going to grow right along with that. You have your transaction and credit losses. That's money set aside just in case you don't pay your PayPal bill or you decide to stiff a seller or something like that. And then you've got customer support and operations ticked up just a little bit. Sales and marketing. You'd like to see that actually stay flat. The fact that they were able to grow that revenue without increasing their sales and marketing budget. In fact, it went down a little bit. Actually, is a pretty good sign. It shows you that maybe they've got another lever to pull in the upcoming quarter so you can increase their marketing spend and can it help drive more people to the platform. Technology development also ticked up. General administrative also ticked up. I think you get where I'm going here. You went from about 5 million, excuse me, 5 billion in total expenses in a period ago on a quarterly basis that went all the way up to 5.7 billion. So guess what happened to your operating income over at PayPal? Well, it shriveled up. It went from 1 billion down to 700 and $11 million. Again, this is on a quarterly basis. Quite frankly, just looking at these numbers, these don't get me excited. Yes, the revenue growth is really low in the most recent quarter, and it looks like really low quality since we didn't really generate any additional income from operations from that revenue growth. So I'm a little disappointed there. On top of that, we saw expenses rise almost a cost of war. They're not egregious. They did a nice job. I don't want to like really slam on PayPal management. They actually did a pretty nice job here, but your operating income shrimp Okay, so I'm not really excited about that with PayPal. We've got $711 worth of positive net income. Even when we factor in this company maybe gets back to 20% year over year growth on an operating side, you're doing about roughly a billion dollars a quarter in a better quarter. And you still got a $99 billion valuation on this one. I'm not super excited from a balance sheet perspective, a little bit more to be excited about. Quite frankly, okay, you got $7.9 billion of cash, a little bit of burn there, but we do have a little bit more funds receivable in and customer accounts. When you see that number tick up, obviously it's on the asset side of the balance sheet, so it's a good number. I'll show you it gets balanced out here as a liability since customer accounts is essentially their money, and if PayPal ran off with it, you'd see many of executives at least <laughs> either flee for the Bahamas, or maybe they get arrested and charged here in the United States. That ticked up. Okay. So you actually like to see customer accounts tick up because it's probably a sign that that money will get churned through and some fees will be generated. Same thing over here on the liability side, you see it tick up. That's a good news for, for PayPal to be quite frank. Now, sometimes when we look at earnings, it can be skewed by things like stock-based compensation and other stuff. When you come down here to the statement of cash flows, you've got that $509 million worth of net income, which we talked about in the quarter was a tremendous drop from a year ago period where you earned over a billion dollars on net income from a cash flow perspective you do get to add back things like depreciation you do get stock-based compensation which ballooned a little bit more in the quarter take a look 509 million dollars worth of net income well the executive said we still need our little vacation in the bahamas we'll pay ourselves 429 million so almost as much as net income went to executives in the form of stock-based compensation not something quite frankly i'm really that excited about when your net income equals stock-based compensation compensation. I click the close button and I find another stock to invest in, quite frankly. Now, from a cash flow perspective, $1.75 billion down to $1.2 billion. So you've got decreasing profitability over at this company, at least on a year over year basis on this quarterly side. And then you've got decreasing cash flows as well. Obviously, the stock has been absolutely obliterated. So there's a little bit of this type of move already priced in on the stock, but there's really nothing, quite frankly, to be excited excited about here from a financial perspective when it comes to PayPal. Now, you can be excited about the valuation metrics. You can be excited that a lot of Wall Street is anticipating this company reaccelerating their growth. So that's the argument you have to make, but this most recent quarter painted lower cash flows, lower operating profits, lower margins quite frankly over at PayPal. And that, quite frankly, does not get me excited as an investor. Now, from a technical perspective, it's still locked in what appears to be like maybe potentially the beginning of a continuation of a downward channel. Yes, you kind of bottomed out down here at $83 per share. But if you were to continue to move up on this stock, maybe even get over $100 per share, $105 per share, you would just simply be creating this bottoming and descending channel that we've seen happen and materialize with so many stocks over the last year. So I'm not convinced that PayPal isn't going to continue this downward channel, but in the intermediate time, I think you could have a nice little rally on this one. It was clearly oversold from a valuation perspective. There's certainly going to be a lot of investors that will buy into that because on top of the valuation, they're buying into this future strategy.
stream of revenue growth, getting back up into that mid 20s, same side on the earning side. They're ex expecting it to reaccelerate, maybe even as high as into the 30% range in the coming quarters ahead. If you agree with both of those things, that these earnings are going to come back along with the revenues. And I tell you what, the multiple is in a nice spot. Technically, it doesn't paint that great of a picture, but there are some puzzle pieces starting to add up with PayPal. For me personally, and I don't always like to give my opinion on here, but people ask for it a lot, not necessarily a stock for me. I think there's some other stocks that are a little bit more profitable and the future is far more certain. PayPal is certainly risky. That's why if these things pay off, this stock probably has a long, long ways to rally. But in the same sense, if they start missing those estimates and people are wrong, well, this stock, quite frankly, can go much, much lower than where it is today. I'll stay clear on that type of risk reward. And maybe you have the balls and the guts to take that on. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed today's video. We'll be back in soon with more. Good luck with your investments.